lined up for tea. In Salonika it was. The chef was dishing out our cups of tea out of a Dixie, which was a big metal bowl. Then suddenly, we heard a noise. Where's that? We all knew what to do, so we all just fell to the ground. There was nothing to hide under, so we all just hit the deck. Then, the whiz bag exploded. We slowly got up and looked around, and some of the lads had taken a hit. Even the chef, who had been dishing out our cups of tea, had taken a hit. His head had been blown right off, straight into the Dixie of tea. It had been bopping up and down. <laughs> oh yeah, and no one, and I mean no one, had tea after that. <laughs> My grandfather George and brother William both joined up as underage volunteers in Leighton. George was still just 15. He was sent to Egypt and was transferred into the Welsh Regiment where he was sent to France and taken prisoner by some German officers. He escaped and was on the run for about three weeks. He was cold, hungry, didn't speak the language and didn't know where he was going. He went to a train station where he saw a line of prisoners and joined at the end of the line to be recaptured. The German officers couldn't figure out why they had one too many. <laughs> he survived the war and became a bus conductor for 44 years. I grew up right by the Elephant and Castle. I was born at the end of the Great War, so my memory comes from the 1920s. My father fought throughout the war, but came back to us damaged and haunted. He had terrible shell shock. At night, he'd wake up screaming, reliving the horrors over and over. I was the only one that could comfort him. I would have been about six or seven. I didn't think it strange at the time, because it was all I knew. But I would have to comfort him and cuddle him while he wept, until eventually he'd go back to sleep. A child cradling her father to sleep like he was the baby. <laughs> <laughs>